Hello everyone. In my first video, we have seen the conceptual aspects of Archimedes principle and the principle of flotation. We have also derived mathematical expressions used to describe the phenomena. In this video, we will apply formulas to solve practical problems related to Archimedes principle. So the first example is a cubical block weighs 16 newton in air and 12 newton when completely immersed in water. The same block weighs 14 newton when completely immersed in another liquid. Find the density of the block and density of the liquid. To solve this problem, we use these three important expressions. You know, when an object is immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upward force or buoyant force, which is equal to the difference between the weight in air and weight in the fluid. And according to Archimedes principle, the buoyant force is expressed as weight of the fluid displaced, density of the fluid, volume of the fluid times G, density times volume is mass of the fluid. And for completely submerged body, we use the volume of the fluid to be equal to the volume of the body itself. For the water, the weight in air minus weight in water is 4 Newton, so buoyant force is 4 Newton. And buoyant force is density of water, volume of water times G, that is density of water, volume of the block times G. I have replaced volume of the block for volume of water because the object is completely below the surface of water. So 1000 times volume of the block times 10, we get 10,000 times volume of the block. And these two numbers are equal, 4 is equal to 10,000 times volume of the block, and the volume of the block turns out to be 4 times 10 raised to minus 4 cubic meter. And mass of the block is calculated from weight in air by dividing it by weight by g and 16 by 10, 1.6 kilograms. Therefore, density of the block is mass of the block over volume of the block, which is 4,000 kilograms per cubic meter. From the information given about the liquid, the buoyant force in the liquid is weight in air minus weight in liquid, and we get 2 newton. And buoyant force is density of liquid, volume of liquid times g. I have replaced volume of the block for the volume of the liquid because, again, the object is below the surface, completely submerged. And we get 4 times a raised to minus 3 times density of the liquid. So these two numbers are equal. From this, density of the liquid is 500 kg per cubic meter. The object weighed more in the liquid than in water, and the density of the liquid is found to be less than the density of water. The density of the liquid is 500, and density of water is 1000. This is a very important conclusion again. In example 2, a perfect cube of side 2 meter made up of material of density 720 kg per cubic meter floats in water. How much volume of cube will be outside of the water? Outside of the water. For a floating body, the weight of the entire floating body equals weight of the fluid displaced. Density of the cube, volume of the cube times g, is density of water, volume of water times g. And uh, so when the g's cancel out, density of the cube, volume of the cube is equal to density of water, volume of water. But for a partially submerged body, the volume of the displaced water will be equal to the volume of the cube below the surface. And therefore, the volume of the cube below the surface will be density of the cube, density of water, times volume of the cube. Using the values, you know the volume is L cubed, L times L times L, L for a cube, is 8 cubic meter. Substituting these values in here, you get 720 for density of the cube. 1000 density of water times 8 cubic meter for the volume of the cube, we get 5.76 cubic meter. The volume above surface of water is required, so the volume of the cube above surface will be equal to the total volume of the cube minus the volume of the cube below the surface, which is 8 minus 5.76, we get 2.24 cubic meter. In example 3, when an ice block floats on water, what fraction of its volume is above the surface? Given that density of ice is 900, and that of water is 1000 in kilogram per cubic meter. The solution for this, again, this is a floating body. So weight of the body is equal to the buoyant force acting on it. The weight of ice is density of ice, volume of ice times G. And buoyant force is density of water, volume of water displaced times G. And with volume of water, volume of ice below, because it is the submerged part of the ice that displaces the fluid. Density of ice, volume of ice times g. Density of water, volume of ice below the surface. I have replaced this value by this one, times g. The g's cancel out, and rearranging, you get volume of ice below the surface, will be equal to 9 over 10 times volume of the ice. The volume of ice above is therefore total volume of ice minus volume of ice below, Vi minus 9 over 10 Vi will be 1 tenth of Vi. So the fraction of ice above surface will be 
just 1 over 10 of the volume of the ice. In example 4, the slab of ice floats in uh, a freshwater lake. What minimum volume must a slab have in order for an 80 kilogram man to be able to stand on it without getting his feet wet? And relative density of ice is given. Try to bring the picture in mind. Here is ice floating in water, obviously, with some part above and uh, the other below. And we want this man to stand on the ice and the ice to be just completely immersed and the, the feet of the person do not get wet. This is what's going on. So this for, for this floating system again, the weight of the entire floating body, in this case, the weight of the ice plus the weight of the person, the weight of the ice plus weight of the man should be equal to buoyant force, which is equal to weight of the displaced fluid. Weight of the ice, weight of the man downward, and buoyant force is acting upward. Buoyant force is supporting these two weights. Therefore, weight of ice plus weight of man, buoyant force, weight of ice plus weight of the man, buoyant force, and weight of the ice is mass of ice times g, density of ice, volume ice times g, and weight of the man is mass of the man times g, and buoyant force is density of water, volume of water times g. Using these three expressions here, we write this one. And for a completely submerged body, the ice is completely below, so the volume of the water displaced will be equal to the volume of the ice. And we use this expression here and cancel the g's and rearrange to get volume of ice equal to mass of the man over density of water minus density of ice. The mass of the man is given already, but the density of ice is not given. Instead, we, we, are, we are given that it is the relative density. So from the definition of relative density, relative density of substance is density of the substance divided by density of water. Therefore, density of ice over density of water. And arranging density of ice, relative density times density of water, we get 900 kilogram per cubic meter for the density of ice. Using these values in this expression, we get the volume ice to be 0 0.8 cubic meter. The last question, uh, a certain block floats in water with 40% of its volume above the surface and the same block floats in an unknown liquid with 80% of its volume above the surface of the liquid. Find the density of the unknown liquid. Again, bring the picture in your mind. Here you have this object floating in water. 40% above means 60% below and in an unknown liquid 80% above and 20% below. Okay, uh, these two numbers are very important numbers that we are going to use in our calculation. So, for the case of the water, if the 40% is above, then it's only 60% below, 0 0.6 times BB. Weight of the block should be equal to, weight of the block should be equal to the buoyant force in water, and therefore density of the body, volume of the body, density of water, volume of the water times G. And for the volume of water, I, I substitute the volume below the surface, that is density of water, volume of water, and this is 0 0.6. Volume below the surface of water is 0 0.6 volume of the body. Canceling the G's and rearranging, substituting the values, we get density of the body to be 600 kg per cubic meter. In the liquid, the volume above is 80%, so the volume below should be 20%. The weight of the block, the block again, is equal to the buoyant force in the liquid. The weight of the block is density of the block, volume of the block times G, density of the liquid, volume of displaced liquid times G. So the volume of the displaced liquid will be the volume of the object below the surface. In our case, it's only 20% or 0 0.2 times BB. And uh, you get density of the body to be 0 0.2 times density of the liquid. So the density of the liquid is 600 over 0 0.2, 3000 kilogram per cubic meter. If you look at what happened here, even though the buoyant force in both cases is the same, the object floats deeper in water with 60% of its volume in water, while it floats uh, with 20% in the liquid. And the final result shows that the density of the liquid is greater than the density of water. This is very important conclusion again. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, like and share to get more videos.